Knock, knock, River asked, a mischievous grin on his face. Who's there? His dad chuckled, already knowing what was coming. Weekend. Weekend who? Weekend be great if you were staying home. River finished with a dramatic sigh. His dad ruffled his hair. Very funny, Riv. Mom and I will be back Sunday evening. Be good for Mimi, okay? River hugged his parents goodbye, his earlier feigned annoyance fading as he realized the freedom that awaited. He was home alone for the entire weekend. Well, almost alone. His grandma, Mimi, who lived in Loveland, would be checking in on him. But still, it was a chance for some serious fun. The house felt different with his parents gone. Bigger, quieter. He spent the afternoon building a pillow fort, the silence broken only by the clatter of cushions and his own excited giggles. Mimi came over for dinner, her presence a comforting warmth in the quiet house. They ate her famous mac and cheese, the aroma filling the kitchen with a familiar comfort. After she left, River settled into the couch, flipping through channels, a bowl of popcorn warming his lap. The house creaked around him, the sounds amplified in the stillness. He brushed it off, focusing on the movie. The freedom of being home alone still felt exhilarating. Little did he know, the night was about to take a turn. The shrill ring of the phone startled River. He fumbled with the receiver, his heart pounding. Hello? River, it's Mrs. Peterson from across the street. I saw someone trying to break into your house. I called the police, but be careful. The phone clattered onto the floor. Fear, cold and sharp, pierced through River. He rushed to the window, peering into the darkness. The streetlight flickered, casting long, dancing shadows. He strained to see, his breath catching in his throat. There was no one there. Had Mrs. Peterson been mistaken? He tried to shake off the unease, but the silence of the house now felt ominous. A low thump from upstairs sent shivers down his spine. He froze, listening intently. The thump came again, followed by the distinct sound of footsteps. Slow, deliberate footsteps. His heart hammered against his ribs. Lights flickered, plunging the living room into darkness. He scrambled for his phone, his fingers trembling as he dialed his parents. The line was dead. Terror, raw and consuming, washed over him. He was trapped. Driven by a primal need to confront the source of his fear, he crept upstairs, clutching a baseball bat. The footsteps seemed to be coming from the attic. He pushed the attic door open, the hinges groaning in protest. Dust motes danced in the single beam of moonlight that pierced the darkness. And then he saw them. Two figures, shimmering faintly in the dim light. A man and a woman, their forms translucent, their eyes filled with a gentle sadness. They were holding hands, their forms fading in and out like flickering candles. Who are you? River whispered, his voice trembling. The woman smiled, a sad, wistful smile. We lived here a long time ago, she whispered back, her voice like the rustle of autumn leaves. Don't be afraid. They shared their story, a tale of love, loss, and their enduring connection to the house. They spoke of watching over the families that lived there, their spectral presence a comforting hand on the house's heart. As dawn broke, the figures faded completely, leaving River alone in the dusty attic. He no longer felt afraid. The house didn't feel empty anymore. It felt filled with stories, with echoes of lives lived and loved. He knew he wasn't truly alone. He had the memories of those who came before him, their presence a comforting whisper in the quiet corners of his home. From that day on, River saw his home in a new light, a place where love and memory intertwined, making even the quiet moments feel full.